This effect looks impossible. But what if I told you that you can get this effect with just a phone, a friend, and a little bit of creativity? Well, I'm gonna do it to prove that it's true and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. The effect that we're gonna try to recreate was first made famous by The Matrix, known as the bullet time effect. The setup is an action performed and then a series of cameras capturing still images all along different positions, giving the impression that you're freezing time but still moving around the space physically. It's a super cool effect, but if you actually wanted to achieve it the traditional way, you need a new camera for each different position that you want to capture, which means that if you want to do even a roughly similar technique to what they used in the matrix, you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars at minimum. But I want to do it without spending a dollar. And assuming that you have a phone and a friend to help you film, you're going to be able to do it too. So let's start by going outside and filming. I want to choose a wide open area with a simple layout and no crazy complex stuff happening around me. The reason will become clear a little bit later on. Make sure to start out with an idea of what you actually want to do. So for example, I wanted to recreate the Trinity jump at the very beginning of the matrix. So I'm going to get my girlfriend to circle around me, recording on a phone and keeping it as steady as possible. You can do this with just a phone and keeping it steady, but since Zayun has sent me over their Smooth 5S, I'm gonna use that to make the whole thing a little bit easier. And we'll actually be giving away one of these in the next couple of weeks, so make sure to follow our Instagram if you want a chance to win. During filming, we made sure to try and keep me at least somewhat in the same framing the whole way around while I held this position as still as I could. We made sure to shoot a bunch of takes over and over again because adding an extra five minutes of filming is way better than having to come back and reshoot everything the next day. And now that we managed to get the footage, this is what it looks like raw. And we're gonna be doing three things to work with it. Stabilizing, speed ramping, and removing the objects holding me up. Plus, I'll show you how to add that little layer of polish to it that'll help tie it all together. So let's start with stabilization. You can see that even though we really tried to make it as perfectly smooth as possible, if we play back faster, you can really see the wobble from the non-perfect camera tracking. Now you might be tempted to reach for warp stabilizer, but don't. Not sure I deserve that. In my personal experience, Warp Stabilizer is terrible at getting these orbiting shots correct. Instead, what you want to use is After Effects Stabilize Motion. We've shown you how to use this effect before to create something like this, where the object is moving in a straight line. What you have to do is exactly the same, it's just the final result that's going to look a little bit different. So highlight your footage and select Stabilize Motion, and I'm going to select Position. Don't worry about rotation or scale for the moment. Then choose the point that you want to keep your camera fixed around, which for me is going to be my head. Make sure that the tracker is big enough and hit play, and watch After Effects do its magic. If your tracker loses its place at all, just go back to that frame, delete all the keyframes after that, and keep going from there. You can also track forward by one frame at a time if you have difficulty in areas of similar color or contrast. Double check that all of the positions are pretty good and then hit apply X and Y position data. And you've got something that looks like this. Already pretty good, but we've got two main problems. It's way too slow and the edges of the frame are peeking in. So let's first scale up and use the position parameter to find the least amount that we have to scale up while still covering any empty frames coming in. Once that's done, pre-compose your shot and move all attributes to the new composition. And now's where we get to speed up our clip. Right click and select enable time remapping and you should have a keyframe at the beginning and end of your composition. Move the keyframe closer to the beginning to speed up your clip and you should have something like this. Keep in mind that the effect we're basing this off of lasted for exactly 68 frames of spinning on a 24 frame per second timeline, almost three seconds from point to point. Now we can add an easy ease in to the end and an easy ease out to the beginning. Highlight these and then go up to your graph editor and pull out the handles until you achieve their desired look. I like my first half to be a little bit more intense than the second half, so I can bring it to a bit of a smoother finish. But now you have this, already looking a lot better. But this really doesn't look good with the stool underneath me, so let's deal with that now. But if we were to just mask out our stool right now, we don't have a clean plate behind us, and even if we created one, everything is rotating around and the background and perspective is constantly changing in an extreme way. So trying things like content to our fill and after effects, and even AI tools like Runway ML still can't give a good result. Looks like AI can't quite do everything yet. So instead, we're gonna use one of my favorite techniques, projection mapping. We're basically gonna paste a fake ground on the real one and then make it rotate perfectly around the scene with us. So start by going back into your composition to the lowest possible composition, where none of your footage has been changed or altered. If any has on your base layer, pre-compose your composition, but choose to leave attributes. 
Now, when you dive into this deeper layer, everything remains perfectly raw and untouched. Here, we're gonna highlight our footage and under our tracker, select track camera. Let it go through your shot and you're looking for as many tracking points on the ground as possible. Highlight these and create a new solid and camera. We don't wanna alter the solid layer orientation at all. We just wanna adjust the X and Y positioning using the 3D layer controls here so that it's about in the center. Now you can add the grid effect to the solid layer and here it's okay to rotate it along the Z axis if you'd like to line up the grid with any other straight lines in your composition. Thankfully, I have a bunch here which makes seeing whether or not it's a perfect track much easier. Scale up your grid layer to cover up as much space as you'd like your projection map to cover up. So for me, that's over top of the stool. Now at this point, your grid should be sticking to your scene as if it was glued to the ground. Now, projection mapping itself used to be super difficult, but Action Movie Dad actually created a free tool that I've linked to in the description below where you can literally just stamp the current frame to align everything to your solid layer for you. It's insane. So once you've got that installed, let's take a screenshot of an example frame in our shot. Export the frame as a PNG or a JPEG, and then let's open it up in Photoshop. And all we have to do is lasso both me and the stool and use generative fill to remove it and make sure that it looks convincing at first glance. Export that image, bring it into After Effects and place it underneath your solid layer, but over top of everything else. Now, when we click the stamp tool in the plugin, our new clean plate has been mapped onto our shot. And if we remove our previous clean plate to see what the shot looks like, it looks like it's tracked around our scene perfectly. From here, all you have to do is drop this underneath your other layers and then mask out the stool to reveal the clean plate behind you. But what I also found could be helpful was actually placing the projection map above everything else so that the fake ground is visible the whole time and just feather it to blend a little bit more with the original and then mask my legs back into the shot. And what's amazing is that because we did this at the base layer, all of that work translates up into our stabilization and our speed ramping. It's not bad, but you can see that it's not quite perfect though. But the good news is that we're about to cover up some of those mistakes with some motion blur. Because we haven't animated these changes by using keyframes in After Effects, we can't just hit the motion blur button, but we can do the next best thing. Go to your effects and search for pixel motion blur. Apply it to your composition, and I like to set it to manual, shutter angle 180, shutter samples 15, and vector detail 30. You can increase the shutter angle to get more intense blurring if you want, but now we have motion blur based off the actual motion between frames of our sequence. This blur also helps to cover up the stool removal and any jittery imperfections. But now we're gonna add the true finishing touches. Let's grab our film grain plugin from Motion Array, and I like to set it to 16 millimeter film. Grab some whooshes and a low drone sound and some intense music to piece it all together. And with all that, we've taken our effect from this to this. Guys, I hope you liked the tutorial and I hope that it shows you that you don't need fancy equipment to get a really cool result. I've left a link to all the assets that I've used in the description down below. And if you wanted to keep growing on your After Effects journey, check out this video over here. I'll see you over there.